The academic Lomonosov is the first floating nuclear power plant that provides the city not only with electricity, but also with thermal energy. The project has been under construction for more than 10 years, and more than 37 billion rubles were spent on its implementation. But will this development lead to a global catastrophe? It was started in 2007, and the resulting energy infrastructure started being fully operational last May. The purpose of the project is to build a station capable of powering the most remote settlements of the planet. The academic Lomonosov is also the world's northernmost nuclear power plant, which took this title away from the Bilibino NPP. History of Floating Nuclear Power Plants The academic Lomonosov is indeed the world's first floating nuclear power plant, although many would argue to the contrary, giving the example of the American barge with a nuclear reactor, the MH-1A Sturgis, in the 1970s. But the point is that the latter was originally a Charles H. Kugel steamer, later converted and fitted with a nuclear power plant with a Martin Marietta water-water reactor. The final nuclear barge served to fill power shortages in the Panama Canal from 1968 to 1975, generating no more than 10 megawatts. The history of small nuclear power plants in the Soviet Union begins in the 1970s. At that time the active development of reactors for self-contained nuclear power sources capable of generating from 6 to 100 megawatts of electricity started. The Bureau, now OKBM Afrikantov JSC, was engaged in the design, which ended up presenting two solutions in the form of ABV6E and KLT40S. The latter just works at the academic Lomonosov. The academic Lomonosov is the next stage of NPP development. Construction of the floating nuclear power plant began 13 years ago, but the onshore infrastructure for it only began to be built in the fall of 2016. The plant is equipped with a pair of KLT-40's low-power reactors, and power generation is based on 220-ton steam generators. The power plant's capacity is a respectable 70 megawatts, but it generates up to 50 cal h of heat. The plant's service life is from 35 to 40 years, including average repairs once in 10 to 12 years. The generated energy resources are enough to provide heat and electricity to a community of about 100,000 people. In the near future, academic Lomonosov will replace the Bilibino nuclear power plant generating 48 megawatts in operation since 1974 and its supplementary Chon thermal power plant. A floating nuclear power plant is a mobile system, but it cannot exist without onshore infrastructure. In the case of Pevek, 7 billion rubles were spent on the shoreline facilities. The onshore infrastructure provides the link between the floating nuclear power plant and the city's high voltage and heating networks. The shoreline also has a special breakwater required to protect the plant from drifting ice and storms at sea. A special feature of the station is the additional possibility to use it as a seawater desalination plant. According to the experts' estimates, the station can desalinate from 40 to 240,000 cubic meters of water per day. The main purpose and prospects of a floating nuclear power plant the idea of floating nuclear power plants is simple to electrify and provide heat to hard-to-reach regions that are poor in minerals and where it is extremely difficult to maintain renewable energy sources. In this case, such a plant is almost the only way out of the difficult situation. As for academic Lomonosov, the Chukotka authorities believe that the plant will accelerate the social and economic development of the far north. Rosener Godem also considers the floating nuclear power plant to be one of the most important infrastructure elements contributing to the development of the Northern Sea Route. Western experts are no less enthusiastic about the project and consider the Russian development to be the first step in the decarbonization of the Arctic. In the future, Rosatom State Corporation plans to create seven plants, making the next generation more mobile by reducing their size while increasing their capacity.
the state holding plans to equip future floating NPPs with more productive RITM-200M reactors capable of generating up to 100 megawatts of power. It is also spoken about export of the technology to other countries and at the moment the negotiations with the companies from Asia, Africa and Latin America are being conducted. The West does not want to lag behind. According to the International Energy Agency, due to the growth of the population and its welfare, the demand for electric power is increasing. And demand is growing faster than the introduction of renewable energy sources. And so we once again become more dependent on fossil fuels and accelerate climate change. A floating nuclear power plant is indeed a solution, but not without its disadvantages, but more about them later. The academic Lomonosov has been a boost for foreign companies. At the end of December 2020, the Danish startup Seaboard Technologies announced its readiness to make nuclear power an affordable alternative to fossil fuels. The company's ambitions are impressive, since it plans to create its own floating nuclear power plants by 2025. In other words, the idea of creating mobile nuclear power plants is certainly not a whim of Russia. The concept is interesting to the collective West as well. Safety of a floating nuclear power plant There are as many opponents of floating nuclear power plants as there are supporters. We are talking about nuclear fuel and radioactive contamination in case of an accident. The Chernobyl and Fukushima 1 accidents are fresh in the memory and the mankind is still reaping the benefits of those terrible events. How safe are such plants? Rosener Godem assures that the academic Lomonosov is safe, because the plant was designed with a large safety margin and can successfully withstand external threats. Vitaly Trutnev, head of Rosener Godem's Directorate for Construction and Operation, says that the floating nuclear power plant was developed with safety in mind, and the reactor unit itself was assembled in several stages under the close supervision of the state environmental expertise with all necessary safety tests conducted. Another argument of floating nuclear power plant proponents is the widespread introduction in the future of a protective system that facilitates the transformation of nuclear fuel into a solid outside the reactor core. On the other hand, Greenpeace representatives, both Western and domestic, consider floating nuclear power plants a recipe for disaster because they now have all the disadvantages of classical nuclear power plants and are additionally exposed to risks due to the unpredictability of operation in coastal areas. If an accident happens, a source of energy will be lost and colossal funds and human resources will have to be spent to eliminate the consequences of the disaster. In addition, the electrification of populated areas during planned repair work with the plant disconnected from the grid is still under question. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.